live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its partner ecosystem. Well, welcome back to theCUBE here. We are live in Washington, D.C., day two of our coverage here at the AWS Public Sector Summit 2017, again in Washington, D.C., just a, about a mile and a half or so, about a mile from the White House, uh, conveniently located here in our nation's capital with John Furrier. I'm John Walls. John, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, great day yesterday, a lot of great interviews. Uh, thought leaders, inspirational, very informational. And again, theCUBE just doing its thing, our inaugural event here at Amazon Web Services Public Sector Summit. Our first time here, this is the seventh year of the show. Started out as just a kind of gathering, uh, people coming together. Kind people. of a hope for gathering too, right? We heard yesterday, guys, well, I hope somebody shows up. Oh, well, we have 10,000 showing up now, it's so. It's still small, yeah. but that's a huge number. Some big companies don't even get that many for their annual user uh, customer conference in general. So 10,000 is certainly a good number. I expect Amazon to continue to blow away the performance and the numbers. I expect this show to be, again, the Amazon reInvent, which is their big show as a company. Amazon Web Services reInvent, which is held in Las Vegas every year and in, uh, overseas. But this is going to be the public sector version. Education, government, health, all these different uh, public sector opportunities are right for the cloud. Right. And that's right. really the big story. Yeah, and I, I think uh, we saw that on the keynotes this morning with Teresa Carlson, who's uh, uh, the Vice President of Worldwide Public Sector here for, for AWS. But she brought out a number of guests, John Edwards being the most prominent, the CIO of the CIA, uh, but also representative for the Australian Tax Office, uh, representative for the Ocean Conservancy. She talked about state and local government. So you hit the nail on the head. We think public sector, I think maybe the presumptions go right to big government. But there are a lot of uh, tentacles, if you will, out there, a lot of segments out there. 22,000 nonprofits, for example, that yeah. AWS is now working with, uh, state, local, and, and federal government. So they've cast a wide net, and they've caught a lot of fish. I mean, yeah, I mean, to me, this is an interesting time in our lives. I mean, it's the famous quote, we live in interesting times. We are living in interesting times, certainly in Washington, D.C. We, we are feeling it, obviously, I mean, from California. I always love to come into D.C. to feel what it's like into the, into the uh, boiling water and you know, with Trump in the office and all the disarray in the government. There's a shooting of a, con of a, of a Congress uh, men this morning, 50, 50 shots fired at a softball practice. It's insane. And so there's also change going on at uh, technology level that's changing government and also roles of education and whatnot. So, so you have this really kind of weird environment, I call the, the, it's like the frog in boiling water. At some point, doesn't know it's being boiled to death, but that's been the public sector for generations. Really, I think the seminal changeover was mainframes and mini computers really kind of powered the government. And I think it's been incremental change since then. You've seen IT uh, become what we've seen in the enterprise. Again, incremental improvement, and bolting on some support here, we've got wireless, and so kind of a moving the, the ball down the field yard by yard, uh, no major long ball throws to the end zone as we stay in football, but now with the cloud you have an opportunity to take the domain expertise of all the different agencies because they want to do a good job, their world is changing. You can look no farther than education, higher ed, and even K through 12, I mean, they're dealing with an audience that's growing up with cell phones, mobile phones, smartphones. I mean, they're not phones anymore. They're computers that happen to make phone calls, and mm. half the kids don't even make phone calls that's anymore. Right. That's right. So half? It's not, are you it's kidding? It's not a phone anymore. That's it's mostly right. a computer it's and a, a camera. It's and so a texting device. Right. User experiences are driving this, and it's a forcing function. So all this disarray, all this opportunity, a perfect storm of innovation happening, and I think the cloud enables that, and I think that's part of the reason why Amazon Web Services is, again, feeling the love here, because the growth is right there in front of them. Now so. we're going to have Teresa Carlson on a little bit later on, but I'd like to just get your take on her. Um, I mean, she's taken this from an infancy stage and has just rocked it. She's uh, tenacious. Absolutely, I mean, right? yeah, Teresa Carlson, we'll have her on. She's been on theCUBE multiple times. We always joke with her when she comes on theCUBE when we're at reInvent and other uh, places we see her when she comes on. Hey, we should come to your conference. And so, we're here. But the thing about Teresa Carlson is, she's loved by all of the customers, okay? And she's very customer focused, but she's tenacious. Mm -hmm. She is smart, she's beautiful, she's a hustler, she's great. So she is a great leader, and she's been knocking on doors in this town for years when cloud wasn't cloud yet, and you know, when you're an innovator, pioneer, the door slams in your face, right? <laughs> so, you know, you got to have that kind of tenacity 
to, to stay on it, and that's what she's done. She's been amazing, I'm a real, real big fan of hers. You know, I think she's got some work to do. I mean, I'm, areas I think that she's got to really expand is expand, go faster with it, with the ecosystem. I mean, some of the, the case studies are out there to be had. We know for a fact, and they haven't talked on stage, but there's a lot of smart cities things going on. There's a ton of transformative Amazon Web Services deals happening, so you want to see more of those, want to see more of them faster. I want to see more peer review, I want to see more case studies. So to me, that's where I think she's going to have to really keep the hustle going uh, and then get her team kind of set the bar high and continue to innovate. You know, um, we talked about that, that seminal moment with the CIA deal, you know, four years ago when the CIA made the move, went to AWS, chose them over IBM. Um, John Edwards was talking about that mind shift at the agency today, saying it was our goal as we looked at all of our partners, instead of making you or them become like us, we wanted to become like them. We wanted to be faster, we wanted to be more agile, we wanted to be more nimble, we wanted to be more open in a way, or at least open to new ideas, and so it was a transformational shift in their paradigm that really set them on a great course that he couldn't have been more positive on that stage today. Talk about AWS and the relationship with the CIA and what they have done for the agency. What Look, it's done there's for the a agency. frustration in public sector. It is the elephant in the room, so to speak. And that is, they want to do more with less because that's their, always been their, their role. That's some kind of say, oh yeah, bolted contractor kind of bids and you know, the procurement process, which old school was, you know, the, the $45 bolt, the joke in DC is for these you know, the big government, you know, army contract and, and uh, contracts. But they still, get, they still get scrutinized on cost. So you know, there's, there's, just, there's been a way of doing things that are changing, right? So how you procure technology, how you deploy it, is really different now, and the opportunity is to get this in the hands of people who want to move fast. They want to actually deliver a good product. There's a lot of great people in public sector who love their job, and you know, if they don't give them the tools, you're going to consistently see what I call a brain drain go on in, in uh, public servants. And you're seeing that going on, obviously with Trump and the government here, a lot of smart people saying, hey, I'm out of here, right? So right. it always right. kind of happens during political changeovers, but no, no more than the passion of the people working, just give them the tools for the job, right? That's the, kind of the cloud mojo, right? It's like, give them, Move fast, give them the technology they need. And a lot of the stuff we're hearing from Fugue, for instance, one of our, our guests yesterday, they need some of the basic stuff automated away. I want the compliance, I want the security, I want to make sure that I can run the operations at scale, and that's really the table stakes. And that's going to be the tipping point. When all those details around compliance can just be programmed in once and just work, that's when you're going to start to see some real acceleration, new apps, new developers, new environments for whether it's students, federal workers, or uh, practitioners in health and human services, you're going to start to see those things happen. Well, it's all about stability, right? Stability oh, yeah. and certainty and knowing that what I'm doing is okay, right? That I'm, I'm staying within the <laughs> confines, the regulations, because you know, this town knows regulations. Yeah, I mean, all these markets, I mean, it, they, you know, how do, what's going on in those worlds? And a lot of people will ask questions. People in the industry have, they know what's going on and they want better, faster, cheaper, now, and I think that's Amazon's ethos. I mean, Jeff Bezos, the CEO, you know, um, is living large right now. Stock price is at, you know, a thousand. He's spent his personal cash to send uh, people to space and build, a, uh, you know, uh, build up Mars, for instance. That's his moonshot. It's not a moonshot, it's a Mars shot. <laughs> so he's got a grand vision, he loves space. But he's always said, the ethos of Amazon, Amazon, which Amazon Web Services is part of Amazon, is, lower prices for customers, constantly deliver lower prices, push the prices lower, and ship product faster. faster. Okay, get it in the hands faster on the delivery side. So you can apply that ethos to anything. It's really a timeless ethos. It's not pegged on one different division. Andy Jassy and Teresa Carlson, they picked that up. They're trying to drive the prices down. CIA talks about that. And, and delivering faster means speed. I want faster drives. I want lower price, and they've delivered that. Amazon has consistently delivered better products at a lower price and working on shipping software faster, better performance. So, you know, delivering here is packets. So, there it is. That's yep. essentially yep. why Amazon's winning. That's the key to their success. Well, it's been a winning formula for sure, and we'll be talking about that much more today as we continue our coverage here from Washington, D.C. We are live here on theCUBE. We'll continue with more from AWS Public Sector Summit 2017 right after this.